Hello, Guy. Hello, Gary. Well, wow. well, well. <laughs> Finally, back by popular demand. By absolute popular demand. It's, you know, our the godfather, the paterfamilias, the doll. Oh, oh, yes. That's enough of me. What about Coverdale? <laughs> um, no, I mean, when we toured, we'll tell this to him, obviously, to make his head even bigger if he needs it, that when we toured Europe and America, the one episode everyone wanted to talk Everyone. about was the Coverdale. We're, we're going we're to say this. There's, there's nothing I've got to say yeah. to you that I don't want to say to him. Yeah. So, so Ever, you know, I think it's time. On. Do you know that was, that was over two years ago we spoke to him? I know. So, and clearly stuff has happened. It has happened to, to all of us, I think, you know, and, uh, and I think we just want to catch up with David. We do. Coverdale in his mansion in, uh, by Lake Tahoe. Uh, could you get him on the line now, please? Operator. Can we have Tahoe 417, please? Let's get him on. Welcome to the Rock on Tours. Okay, guys, I'm ready. But it's a big tune for sure. I actually wrote that originally for Tina Turner. Of course, I had gone and found Joni Mitchell down in Florida and brought her back. I've listened to a few of them and they've been really good, man. I'm sitting in the back of the car coming into London. They're brilliant. Thank you guys for still being around, still making music, still being into it, and doing this podcast. It, it's uh, it's fabulous. Well, I get the feeling that us three should go for a pint. That's what I think. I'm in a band now. <laughs> it's called Roxy Music. You know this thing about the 10,000 hours of experience? Oh, yeah, to, to get good at something. When we recorded Arnold Lane, we'd done about 50 hours. The Rock Hunters podcast with Gary Kemp and Guy Pratt. Keep on rocking! Hello there. Hey! hey! <laughs> yeah. Gito. Yes, yes! Got da Gary, darling, you look even more devastating than I saw the last time. <laughs> uh, you know what it is? It's, it's fucking projection, mate. It's fucking projection. That's what it is. Oh, that's a bit better. I can see them easier. I'm crunched over like fucking Quasimodo. That rings a bell. Darling, can you see me? It's the fucking grey snakes. <laughs> Do you know, Guido, I was flashing on, uh, If you, I was flashing, no wonder I was arrested. I was flashing on, next year will be 30 years yeah. since you and I shared the stage in Japan with Jimmy. Oh, my God. Next fucking year. Not to make us sound any older. What do you want? Because you're in this weird, you're in this weird, you're on this weird portrait setting. Do I look like the fucking Pope from there? You, you look wonderful. We can continue. We can. We can continue. We, yeah. but David, you were talking about Guy and Jimmy on the same stage 30 years ago. We, we, Guy and I saw Jimmy. We had a drink with him at Christmas, didn't we? We did. Jimmy was in good form. He was in good form. Well, it's, it's so interesting. We struggled, uh, of course, through COVID. Uh, I was able to, my studio's seven minutes door to door from my home. Um, my producer at the time, co-producer, was a cancer survivor. Uh, so we just had the most intense lockdown, but were able to do a bunch of projects. But Jimmy was unable to go to studios because we wanted to remix the Coverdale Page oh. record for, for the 30th anniversary this year. And we just ran out of time. It's heartbreaking, actually. Look, broken, broken. It, Lord of Pink. But it's, it's a shame there wasn't a live recording. There, there wasn't any proper live well, recording. Well, we have there, a bunch right? of acid. No, there wasn't. Um, the, no. But the circumstance is the bootlegs can be so easily finessed now uh, with upscaling video. And also you can do the same with audio. That's true. Hardcore fans just want to see it, you know. So uh, that's yeah. the scenario. We just literally run out of time. That's the heartbreaking thing. How's the saucer full of secrets? How's Nick? Nick is great. I mean, we had an incredibly fierce year last year. We'd, in Europe, we did 60 shows in 90 <laughs> days in 29 countries. God, you're not that young, are you? Nuts. Jesus Christ. Uh, and, then, no. and then we went to America, no. America and Canada. We, we, I think 90 shows altogether. Oh, my God. I, I, yeah. If I find out you were near me, I would be most upset because it's all of that early stuff is my favorite Floyds. I saw them... Um, Opening for Hendrix at Newcastle City Hall, the original was Sid. It was just and a huge, you know, sheet behind them as opposed to all the amazing projection screens and things now. But still, it was like nothing we'd ever seen before. It was amazing. Yeah, and then and then followed by Hendrix. What was that? Was that the first time you'd seen Hendrix? Uh, yeah, I was fifteen. I almost had the shit kicked out of me. I bought a poster of Hendrix. And I was so taken by the show. I'm playing drums on this guy's head in front of me. Look, mate, if you don't stop, I'll fucking, you know. 
Uh, it was unbelievable. Literally, he looked like he was 20 feet tall. Unforgettable experience. And, and he's still my muse, you know? Yeah. Well, this well we true. played Newcastle City. We played there, didn't we, last year, Guy? Newcastle City We did Hall. play Newcastle City Hall, yeah. I thought that stopped. And, and I thought it had finished. I signed a petition to keep it going, but you, you, or there's some history on those boards. Well, obviously, gentlemen. your signature changed oh, their mind. But also, David, because listen, we, we've gone straight and we yeah. haven't had an intro. We need to say oh, that. My are... name is David Coverdale, alias Raymond Dovetail from <laughs> Deep Purple Days. Uh, I'm in the pink, as you can see. It's my rap outfit. I took my son last year. I've got these uh, pink lubies on as well, which is cutting a dash here. It's, Jeans that are cutting into my midsection, as only an aging rock star should have. Uh, but I'd taken Jasper for his birthday to uh, a restaurant in Malibu called Joffrey's. Uh, a pack jam, Kardashians, and then I had no idea. Suddenly I hear, yo, pink hoodie. And I'm like, jeez, oh my God, I have a pink hoodie. So I turn around and there's a famous rapper starts chatting away with me. I can't understand a word. And Jasper's translating. He's like really blown away because apparently he's a famous rapper. I told him I was Run DC. I don't, don't, don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Who was he though? Do you not remember no, his name? I fuck, I, I can't remember. No, uh, but his yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. when I said Run DC, his partner, beautiful girl, just spit her martini all over him. So I had a kind of revenge. But it's funny. It's it's pink, but it's made by a company called Purple. <laughs> so it's rather appropriate. Uh, 50th anniversary. Yes, yes, of course. One, one second, because Guy wants to tell you something. Okay. Bursting I'm burst, I just you. want to tell you that this is... Yes, dear. That, that you, this is the most requested thing ever for this show, right? You, If you ask our audience what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of rock on tours, 80% of them at least are going to say oh, you. Mine. And that's a big tune for sure is our creed de coeur. You are our godfather. I need a tissue. T I need a you tissue. Are, you are our <laughs> paterfamilias, David. Let me tell you something. David Arnold, David Arnold, the great film composer. Oh, I five, love David Arnold. Five yeah. Bond films, who we had on the show. He tweeted that our episode with you should be put in a museum and preserved for future <laughs> generations. I agree. Yeah. But, but yeah. Tom said to me, my so co-producer Tom back, said, mate. Welcome back, mate. Thank you so very much. And, and we're on... We're on visual, and I'm looking like some kind of uh, little puppet here. Somebody's got his hand up my ass going, you know. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, Tom Payton, can you just check they're getting some of me here? Because all I can see on here is yeah. just like a passport. <laughs> That's actually what we can yeah. see. As so well. I said to Tom, I said, oh, yeah, I love you. remember Guido. You remember Tom, Too Tall Tom from Restless, the Restless Heart sessions we did, Guy. Uh, He's, I said, yeah, a guy told me that I'm, like, number one on the Rack and Tours. And he went, not anymore. I went, oh, what? Like, 24 hours before doing this, I suddenly realized I'm being dumped. And he said, oh, because they're doing video now. So, no, well, no, we're not, no, not always true. And, 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 you are, and you are one of the most popular episodes. That's, ador that that's absolutely episodes, adorable to hear. Thank you so much. And also, David, because you were one of the first. You've got to remember, we were an unknown quantity when we started. And you were one of the dear friends. Who, who came, you know, who agreed to talk to us. And we are forever in your oh, debt pleasure. for that. Well, it's huge now, isn't it? Isn't it? Not, your, not your genitals, but uh, well, the show is huge. It's a big well, podcast yeah. for sure. Ah, I saucer so full of secrets, I know. <laughs> saucy, saucy and full of secrets, Guy <laughs> Pratt, Esquire. We've, we've, got, <laughs> we've got to talk about the hair. Oh, yeah. It looks I, wonderful. And thank it's you. short. And what I want to know is, what did you do with all the stuff that fell on the floor? All eBay, that hair. I eBay. Mean, <laughs> it should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. No, surely. no, no, no. Uh, the uh, it's so interesting. I had. I've been. I've been asking Cindy, who you remember, guy, my beloved of course, partner. Please send her my love. Uh, you please tell. Of course, she's actually in Bali on a medita meditation retreat, not Barnsley. I'm sure they have fabulous <laughs> temples, but but. She said, ah, yeah, come on here to Barnsley, meditation centre of the world, you know, fifth <laughs> chakra. Uh, <laughs> I just saw a thing on David Bowie uh, talking about when he put the Spiders of Mars together. And they were all, they're all a Yorkshire band, you know, That's right. and he the, said, the spiders and they're from all Hull. going all excited. Sp yeah, spiders from Hull. And he said, uh, 
and this is what you're going to wear. And they went, Whoa, I'm not fucking wearing that. Oh. And then the first show was like chicks all over them. And they were going, where's the mascara? Where's the blush? They were committed immediately. You know? <laughs> Funny story. But yeah, last year I got so... I had to cancel uh, my farewell tour, which is, of course, double heartbreaking. Um, I got very, very ill. I mean, as, as a singer, Gary, you know this, sinus infections and stuff are just run of the mill. This was deep. This was evil. Um, so I was on six months last year. I got, finally got cleared of this. It was all in my larynx uh, in January. And apparently, after all seven months or whatever, there was still a trace of it yet, which nasal sprays do us to do. But all of the incredibly heavy antibiotics I had to take throughout most of last year, coupled with prednisone, which is just a horrible steroid scenario, mm. and my hair just got fried, you know? So it oh. escalated. I fully intend uh, to hashtag embrace the gray. Uh, silver snake, gray snake, you know, I have to change all the posters. Um, White snake? The, uh, white snake? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. Gray snake, mate. Gray snake. Mate. Very white snake. Actually, I'm, and, and I'm starting to see some blonde come in. It's driving me, oh my God, are we talking hair with David Coverdale on the rack and tears? Uh, yes. But D David, you had, that, you had that sinus problem quite a few years ago, didn't you? Uh, when you, were, you yeah, had to have an operation. Entirely different. Yeah, that was, oh, that was really bad. When these things get on your cords, that's that's just closes you down entirely you know i'd spend a fortune keeping the guys as as safe as we could we called it the covid bubble uh private jet wherever we went you know and still that covid just came in and and took some of the crew out you know it was really really challenging so you know? what is is you, are you going to come back are you going to be able you oh, i don't know stage again? i'm i'm working now on a, a rotator cuff torn rotator cuff <gasps> So literally this year, um, I gave my fantastic band um, the year off because I didn't know what was going to go on. I couldn't make any particular commitments to add a, a clear, you know, nowadays you, it's six months you have to set up a tour. So I've got recording to do. We've got projects for the next three to five years. You know, I'm hoping to get the wow. band in when they're free. Uh, there's talk um, being approached a great deal with Vegas residencies, of course. Uh, I'd love to get to Japan and South America. Really, it's going to depend on health and people's so, availability. So you're not finished. You are not finished. Well, certainly not with music, you know. I mean, I love the Farewell Tour. Are you kidding? Playing home. Half the time, I'm so, you know the song you like, uh, Gary, the Is This Love song that we talked about the last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo inevitably, I'd start bawling. And the audience, when we played Newcastle, the audience sang the song for me, every word, while I stood there. At the end of my thrust, <laughs> weeping, <laughs> yeah, openly weeping. It was I've never so been at the emotional. end of your thrust. No, you? and a guy has. He can't remember <laughs> it because he was rat -assed. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've... But would it, would this, I guess I'll never this talk. would be the forever farewell, right? The forever farewell. I mean, you're not uh, oh, no, stop no, 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 no. I know contemporaries of mine that have been doing a farewell tour for 20 years. You know, no, no, that's not it. I'm 71 plus. You know, it's, it's a number that I see and go, really? Because most of the time, I certainly don't feel like that kind of age that with the, uh, the perspective we had growing up mm -hmm. when 20 looked old, 25 was all oh, ancient, 30, oh, you're kidding, you know? It's just uh, fascinating to, to look at. I have a feeling 72 is going to be a really super year for me, not 1972, uh, my <laughs> age, you know? Um, but yeah, my, my passion is, I think, you know what, I think aging is obviously if you start looking backwards instead of forwards and, and I don't that's, do that. That's you know? absolutely the thing. But also David, I think there's a thing, especially yes. with all your, your reissues and your remixes and everything like that. You are the undisputed king of the unboxing video. Uh, uh <laughs> it, that, it seems to me that rather than the singing the salesman Christmas guy, the singing salesman, you, sorry, no, darling. David, it seems to me that you view your catalog as a living, breathing thing. Yeah. You know, the, it's, a, a, it's really a wonderful what, what I refer to as, uh, as, as a legacy series, uh, to be honest with being, it's my 50th year being an actual paid professional musician since I joined wow. Deep Purple. Um, so a lot of the music that we made in those different decades, I'm a frustrated like DJ 
So instead of making cassettes now, you do playlists and put them on shuffle. We used, obviously, throughout the time, the height of technology, etc., which has just been thrashed by recent technological uh, achievements, you know. So being able, I've got an amazing team around me who genuinely care about getting the best out of this stuff. We're digging out, if you went into the Restless Heart thing, the rehearsals and the pre-production, all the stuff. It's, it's I mean, I, I was playing the, uh, the demo uh, CD more than the actual um album because it was just amazing just stop what, there. you know because you and guy because guy's on that is there oh my just, god guy is ever listen, although guy? i loved hearing the treatment <laughs> of that and i've got it and i'm really really proud of of some of my work on that. all of your work <laughs> yeah. all of your work it you know brilliant. where you're was... obviously tom and i discussed that that was his first project as an intern um but yeah uh reno was very good to you you said you made me a fabulous deal to say Look, if you let me just do me bass part so I can go home, otherwise I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Reno has that effect on a man, I tell you. The mountain was great. It was just a long drive down and up. Yeah. Because your, yeah, your house yeah. was fat. I mean, I adore, but being, I, in, I adore being in your oh house. Oh, my God. And, I've and got to tell you. Movie the... night I used to love. In our jammies, watching a movie on, in, yeah. your, in your yeah. screening room. Yeah. I mean, well, that was Well, I remember watching that, um, to God bless him, uh, Tony Scott, um, uh, True Romance. Yeah. And yeah. during it, and we were somewhat lit, as you can imagine. The um, what were we? The bloody gloves. We were a different awesome. band name yeah. every week. That's I think right. every day. Yeah, so, yeah. We 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 pulled we pulled the session after the OJ verdict. I remember. It was just, everybody was so deflated. Yeah, yeah. Who was the drummer? But, uh, Who are you playing? Dr Who was drumming? Denny, Denny Kamasi, man. Just yeah. I was listening to you, but you were. Uh, we weren't blessed with you on it. We. Uh, wrote a bunch of new songs uh, right on top of uh, the, the Coverdale Page Out sessions in Miami. And it was a song called Saccharin. I'm going, this has got to be on there. And Kolodna, the A&R guy, were getting, oh, no, 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 I don't think so. Um, but it's, I just heard it the other day. And Denny's just hot knife through butter. It's yeah. delicious. No, really it's fantastic. Magnificent. Um, magnificent man. But yeah, so now it, up in Incline Village on Lake Tahoe, the snow is like 40 feet deep. We're coming to the, the biggest record, number one snowfall. Uh, you must have seen the ridiculous. There's been 12 or 13 atmospheric rivers just wiping California, cleansing, healing, purifying, and flooding. But we've been getting snow. Wow. So the snowblowers can't blow the snow off the, the highway the, that we go down, Mount Rose Highway, to the studio and, and back. That is just crazy. Wow. They're like 40 feet high on either side. It's astonishing. The snow, we've just had another weekend of storms. The snow blowers can't get it out of there. The snow, it won't blow over the top of the snow there. Skiers are just well, in is, hot heaven. Isn't, Jer does, isn't Jeremy Renner near you? Doesn't that? My God, I, we almost bought that house for the studio I'm sitting. We almost bought that very house. And I, it was a terrible driveway. And I said, if we have a long winter, we're never going to be able to work to the, get into the studio. So we got to bought a house and built a studio in Reno. But yeah, I know exactly where. Poor bastard! What a dreadful, wow, dreadful yeah, he scenario. He got run over by his own snowplow, didn't he? Is, is he back home? Uh, he's there. I think he was helicoptered. He was in Reno. Uh, you know, uh, I have very good close friends in uh, renowned hospital where he was, and they've been great with me and my family. Uh, and they looked after him fantastic, but I think he went home for um, rehabilitation, et cetera, et cetera. He had a lot of stuff, you know, bones yeah. and stuff. That is, I can't even imagine how painful that was. Just horrifying. Is it, can you still get to the studio now you're snowed in? Yeah, I'm seven minutes. I, I bought a, we bought another house uh, in a gated community about seven minutes away from the studio. So you what? So, so what? Have you, have you just got houses at every stage up the hill now? They're all in all in the country, all in this country. But yeah, there's there's a lot of them. Because <laughs> when we Not last spoke, about, when we last spoke, you were trying to you were still trying to sell the house that um, that I stayed in. Is that gone? Oh, oh yeah, that's we, we sold that, and I, I sent Cindy straight out to buy a beach house in Malibu, which had been a promise, a promise kept for thirty years. After thirty years. Uh, and, and a dream fulfilled for Cindy. It's oh, amazing. We're nice. right literally on a private beach and nothing between us and Japan. It's glorious. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Look, you talked earlier about, you know, looking forward and not back. But, yeah. but you know, paradoxically, with you these know, reissues. A lot of what you've been yeah, yeah. doing, these reissues, and they are so well done. And guys have spoken about that. And you have a very clever thing called, is it evolution mix? Evolutions, yeah. Evolution mix, where, where you start with a, a bit of the demo. Yeah, a bit of cassette sort of playing, morph. you know, or whatever. And then suddenly the build uh, in, into what became the final, you know. That's what I was I saying earlier. This... I'm listening to more of them. I don't know whether you remember we had uh, those beautiful singers guy, or you might have gone no, home I and got, gone I, into I, rehab. I never, I never met them. But, <laughs> but the... Damn uh, it, I just, it was just blokes when like I was there. Old blokes, old yeah. Blokes. Um, but the... Uh, we did a song called Your Precious Love, a kind of modern soul style um, in, in a 60s approach. And uh, it was, and your playing on it is, is magnificent. It, those kind of things, because initially it started off as a David Coverdale solo That's record. That's right, yeah. And EMI got, yeah, and EMI said to me, no, no, we're, we're going to hold you to your contract, which is David Coverdale known as the artist Whitesnake. Um, but those kind of songs really... Uh, I thought were great, and then we added my uh, one another Dutchman, another flying Dutchman, uh, Joel Hoekstra, who is just a masterful musician. Came in and doubled uh, Adrian's guitars and just made it a, a bit more White Snake, you know. And I, it's getting a lot of uh, airplay for me. I'm, I love the record. It's and it's brought it up to date. That's mm -hmm. the cool thing. It's. Uh, and I put. I so, don't are know you talking you, about Restless Heart? You still Restless, Heart. Restless Heart. We've got yeah, another one, yeah, yeah. uh, but uh, what I'm doing, I've, I've got. Uh, Guy, have you come across Derek Sheridan on your travels, no. your sessions? No, 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 no. Derek, Derek Sheridan is just like the son of John Lord. Is ex and oh, I, wow. I know he won't mind me saying that. Uh, Derek Sheridan and his scorching organ. So, you know, I sent him down stuff, and he just, he is, he's a. He's a fan of the of the music, uh, and he just gives me the most incredible fiery. Because after John, I didn't want to commit to a keyboard player. You yeah, know, John there's been a lot of movement in that. Yeah, I've noticed that with but you. The, uh, but yeah, I've got a lovely guy now, an Italian guy called Michele Lupi. Looks like a young uh, Luciano. Uh, he's fantastic, a super singer. I've got an amazing band. You know Tanya. You did I, no, uh, I think a bass to, clinic. Yeah, I did a yeah. Oh I had my a rather, god! I, I had a How quite shameful night. Not with her. I mean, just generally. There, no, there were a lot of people. Well, that's there. disappointing. I would have loved that story. She uh, no, is I want to. I want. I want to know how. The, the, this is Tanya O'Callaghan we're talking about, who is the current White Snake bass player, I believe. Who, yes. And the first female snake. Oh my god! So, it, it never even occurred to me uh, before, but I am so glad I actually had. Uh, the profound pleasure of, of of Tanya. I saw we were headlining a festival in Baltimore, and I think 2019. And as I arrived there, they had monitors, you know, showing the stage all back. And I went, "Fuck, oh, who the hell is that? He's amazing! Serious dreads flying, all that." And he backs up, and there's tits. I went, "Holy mother of God! It's a babe!" <laughs> you know. And I met her afterwards, he, and he uh, thought it was Nick Beggs at first. Oh, she was no. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know who it was. It's like blonde Bob Marley, uh, just amazing. Uh, Roberta who she, Marley. Who was, she playing, who was she playing with? It was Stephen Adler, an old mate of mine from Guns, the right, original right. Uh, drummer with Guns and Roses. She made such an incredible. It's straight into memory banks, boom, if anything, I ever need that. And she's wow. a lovely singer, too. She's an amazing ambassador for the Emerald Isle, uh, the most lilting, beautiful. Uh, and, man, when she gets on stage, it's oh, just no, she's extraordinary. She's, she's absolutely she's, fantastic. And please, please send her my very, the, very best. <laughs> oh, I will. But she's starting something uh, I'd love to plug. She's uh, working. Uh, I can't remember his name, bless him. The singer was Sepultura. Uh, he's another organic vegan kind of. Uh, they're working on a, a show that should be coming on YouTube soon called Highway to Health, uh, which uh, you know she she would take me to veg vegan restaurants. I also vegan. I noticed vegan that in your post. I noticed that on her feed. I noticed she's she's big on that, which is, oh, which is a great. Oh thing. my god, the food we went in Estonia in Tallinn. This small restaurant. 
Everything. Oh, we were there. No place so, before. What a vegan one! Oh my no, god! It was no, no, we were in Tallinn last year, and I just never been to the Baltic states before. Oh, I'm amazing. knocked yeah. out by yeah. all of them. Oh my! I wonderful. tell you, I was there after the Russians pulled out. You know, all of those markets start to open up. You know, Poland, etc., Estonia, uh, Czech, you know, all of these things. It was hard to get to during uh, the Soviet occupation time. Um, so. Uh, I went to Tallinn not long after. Oh my God! It, I'm going. I was wishing them like every success. It just looks so challenging because basically oh, right. all resources were taken out, nothing kind of put yeah, in. Yeah. And literally now it's just one of the prettiest amazing. towns in, in, in. Yeah, it's just and the people. You know, it's just amazing what they've achieved. It's just uh, a really beautiful place. And yeah. Poland, that I was so concerned about in 1990, is v probably going to be joining uh, G7, and quite rightly. Yeah, uh, it's got a higher standard of living than Britain They've just had now. an amazing... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> well, don't get me started, yeah. G. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, we're not going uh, there. Okay, I want, to, I want to just talk about the new box set as well, because you've done, <laughs> yeah. because do, you should talk about that, because, I mean, obviously you've got these four different CDs, you've got the remix, you've got the yeah. remaster, you've got the, the evolution, yes. and, and then you've got the one with the backing singers as well. Well, yeah, oh God, the Hook City Harlots, yeah. And, uh, Tell us got, about the Hook City Harlots, because I don't know are, enough about those. You know, one of the things that I've loved doing is exploring local talent. Uh, if you'll excuse the expression. You're, yes, you're, you're famous <laughs> the, for it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the Benny Hill of rock, oh my God. Um, no, so uh, working with Tom Gordon, who you remember, guy from the Restless Heart yeah. Sessions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he is like Mr. Reno. He's connected to everyone. You need a sax player? I've got him. So we have the Hook City horns on something. Yeah, it's a song called If You Want Me, which is a kind of tribute uh, to Stevie Wonder. Um, but uh, they're great. Three girls, Cam, Cammy, and uh, who's the other one? Misty and Jackie. Misty, uh, and Jackie, that's it, yeah. And we've uh, got them coming in for do some more sessions. Just about to do a string quartet with four amazing players from the. So, what did you do? Did you go back to to the to the mixes of the album and then? Oh put yeah, them yeah. On, or were they on? Well, you, you know, did. I I owned all of those things, so we had all of the until I did the catalog sale. But it's with the blessings of Warners, who I work with, Rhino and Roundhill, uh, that these scenarios, which for me, are just as I say, it's a legacy series that I can uh, mess around. It's the same house as we discussed before. We just rearranged the furniture, put a different yeah. coat of paint I, on. I, I, I'm so interested in those demos, though. I mean, are they tend did they tended to be on like, you know, telephones? And oh, oh, yeah. Coming? Well, a lot of that, the album I wrote, Face, not up FaceTime, eye chatting with Doug Aldrich, a, a monster of wow. a musician. Oh, Doug, um, yes. Well, that was his first the, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his first album with you. With me? Yeah, yeah that was with me. What an in fucking He's explosive guitarist. electrifier yeah. guitar player. Yeah, and a lovely, lovely man. Yeah. We've been recently reconnecting. Uh, I've been sending the, the guys who were all featured on the Still Good To Be Bad record. Um, all of the videos we're doing and uh, all related to them, you know. So it's a, definitely a tribute. Once a snake, always a snake, as far as I'm concerned. And thankfully, have a great relationship with the majority of them. Um, but they're loving what we're doing. It's also, as you experienced with Restless Heart, oh, my God, I remember that. Because there were songs yeah. on there. I was going, why the hell didn't we put that part in? And that Your Precious Love, that's what I was talking right, about. Right. And there's two movements that I'm going... Why did we take that out? Those are great, you know. Uh, but it's it's fantastic to revisit but, them because and I guess uh, the um, the Beatles albums, you know, the the remixes. Oh, the the, Martin, the anthology. The, all, oh, Giles is with doing all the amazing demo, with all the demos. Amazing. On, uh, well, not the demos, the early stuff. You know, I guess that has validated. That's allowed us to oh. open the blueprint. Well, you're listening songs, now. So you've got interested. fabulous digital headphones. You've got all of this equipment now. So flaws, and and the wonderful thing is. Vinyls outselling CDs, yeah. mind blowing, you know. But with the modern technology now, you know, old mixes don't really cut it. And the mastering, of course, is extraordinarily important. GK, <laughs> let me tell you, the, doing those early demos, scratchy um, 
scratchy uh, cassette things, you know. Yeah, uh, we're yeah, never, yeah. never really meant to see the light of day. It's no, just, but once it, you've already proven to the world that those yeah. songs you you but it's and people that's one of the favourite elements of what we do because they see how yeah. the song grew from this dorky couple of scratchy chords or you know into yeah. with, symphonic white snake classics. It's, with, um, with you sort of make making up lyrics. <laughs> yeah, I mean, jamming up. Yeah. The, the original version of Here I Go Again, when I was singing a guide vocal, so the band knew where it was. I'm going, listen to Tom Waits on the old gramophone before I'd finish <laughs> the lyrics. Yeah. So uh, those kind of things just take you back to, uh, you know, a little snapshot in time. But also, because there's always a thing, because now with computer based recording, wherever you start the song, it's going to end up in the same thing there's not that thing you know they're always used to that thing of oh it hasn't quite got what the demo got because the demo was a unique standalone recording i learned that from i think working with richie blackmore uh don't try to recreate demos right. you know because it's an entirely different environment when you're doing the bass yourself you, you know uh, 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 you hear certain things and then you work with fantastic musicians who want to put their identity yeah. on as you did when you worked with me it's guy pratt that's contributing to the overall sound, you know, counter melodies. It's yeah. no, it's just beautiful and grooves. And there's a super one of you. We were doing the uh, Pete Townsend thing in the, in oh, the yeah, studio yeah. in one of the videos, remember? <laughs> and you were doing the, the yeah, windmills, windmill, yeah. kick ass. <laughs> but that kind of stuff, you go, oh my God, yeah. And the, I can't remember all the names, but every week we were a different that's right, name. That's right, yeah. Can you? I, can, I can't I but actually, remember. But Dave, the, Dave I want to get back to, to this whole thing of the evolution. Yeah. What's. What, when you're talking about the technology and everything, I've also a valid point here is, is that there's been director's cuts for years. The directors have been allowed oh, yeah, to go back yeah. and mess with. So, you know, it's, it seems, it actually seems oh, crazy I get it's that, taken yeah. so long for it to happen. Well, it's, I find in my life, I have to, I must confess. Oh, what you got? Oh, and look at this, Guido. This is actually the to-do list from the Restless Heart sessions. Oh, this classic classic the thing oh, ab the when, when was my turn the to go to the shops <laughs> yeah yeah i was we're going to keys seeing, mix we're yeah seeing a, uh, we're, uh, we're seeing a big poster with lots of well, like yeah i know, can't say i can't see what's uh, out things to do there's the chess beaters <laughs> there's the chess beaters the absolutely 100 percent collectively open wet dreams of success with bloody heat seeking penile implants and gloves <laughs> <laughs> you really you, but yeah, so but you know, some, sometimes demos w w would work for a band. I mean, I'm thinking back to sort of dire straight sultanates of swing, where oh they yeah, 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 they yeah. recorded it and recorded it, and in the end, just used their pathway little tiny studio demo. But the thing is, you were making in the '80s. We were all making big sounding records. I can't yeah. imagine ever comparing a demo to what you could get in a lush studio. Well, I got to tell you, whenever I, I ascribe to a the Indian philosophy of uh, East Indian philosophy of um, com uh, commune with your instrument before you take on the affairs of the day, even if it's a couple of chords, it's a grounding, wow. you know, uh, sending nice vibrations, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, but when I'm that. writing something, I can hear what I want to suggest to Tommy. I can, I just hear it in my head. I hear the picture you know, of, so I, before we even, I even played to the band and I always without fail work with the, the current musicians I'm working with, with them in mind of how we can get the best out of them on that particular song, particularly with the, the enormously successful 87 act, the eponymous white snake record. Those arrangements were for Cozy Powell, you know, God rest his soul. That was, uh, it was all, stuff that I know he would have just been extraordinary. Angelie did a super job, but originally the songs were arranged for with Cozy in mind before he went, we went our separate ways. Do you play guitar? Um, play yeah, I'm a domestic guitar god, Gary. You know. But is, do, do you write on guitar? I write, or actually, you, I, have, I write ballads. Is this, love, is this Love was on, you know, honk, stomping piano. Uh, the yeah. rock stuff I usually do, uh, riff stuff I usually do on guitar. Uh, although I've been mixing it up a lot, um, it's just... Well, I think that's my question, David. Do you prefer to write with someone in the room? Well, no, I do. I come up with certain things. For instance, uh, with the, the last studio, White Snake Studio album, 2019, I think Flesh and Blood, it was fantastic to work with Red Beach as a writer 
and to work with Joel Hoekstra because it was brand new. Joel had worked for seven years with uh, an American band called Night Ranger. So when I said, okay, I'm sitting in the same desk of Ukrainian oak, which will never break and never bend. Uh, I'm sitting here in my executive spot with my boss socks on and Rev's here and Joel's here. And I said, okay, what you got? So Joel would start playing me a couple of chords and I'll go, I think that's more Night Ranger than Whitesnake. Obviously, he'd been immersed in that for seven years. And Rev was yeah. coming up with, I can hear that with Kip Winger singing, you know? So let's right. start from the, and I'd give them a riff and then they'd put their, their feeling onto it. Because uh, I think what, 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 what you spoke about in, when we interviewed all those few years ago, uh, all I those years ago, you... Gary. I know. I remember. Yeah, all those. Were, were you in your? You were in your sixties then. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. uh, <laughs> you what, shush, what, for God's <laughs> sakes! What we, what we spoke about is your love of soul music, and I think oh, that's God. the difference between you yeah, as a you absolutely. know as a as a rock hair rock singer. You know, you are offering so much more soul than you normally hear. You wouldn't get that with the Scorpions, etc. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 you know, I love the Scorps. They're old mates of mine. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't stand comparisons. It's so funny, Guy, that with this being the 30th anniversary of Coverdell Page uh, and me saying a couple of years ago, I think, in fact, on the Rack and Tours, uh, we're hoping to do a, a 30th anniversary remix. Yeah. Jimmy does mixes uh, like Jimmy Page style and I do a Coverdale style. I think the fans would love that, you know, because we couldn't get together. You know, I'm in fucking Reno. He's in outside of London. Um, but the somebody came up and it was a, an English, <laughs> an English journalist and every track was going, oh, and this sounds like so-and-so, so -and, -so, and this sounds like comparisons with yeah, Zeppelin yeah. songs that I, I, I don't even know. You know, this was a total lead snake, white Zeppelin. You know, it was Jimmy Page. And so obviously Jimmy Page is going to sound like Led Zeppelin, for God's sake. We've all grown up with that, you know, and I'm going to sound like David Coverdale. You know, the circumstances, I don't see there's any comparisons at all other than lazy journalism. Yeah, you but, know, but, you know, but I think the point, the, 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 aspect. The, the point, the, the point that Gary was making was, for instance, the stuff you talk about. So like you just said, you just said it was a tribute to Stevie Wonder. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a, that's yeah. what your references tend to be. Which is, oh, my God. When I joined Deep Purple, my most as opposed yeah. to Robert Plant. When I when I joined Deep Purple, like at that time, I had no, no idea. Biggest band in the world or whatever. Uh, my most played albums that year was Music From My Mind, uh, There's a Riot Going On, and Donny Hathaway Live. You know, I'm going... So all I did was write, you know, blue stuff. I met Little Feet years, years ago, and they were going, oh, man, we love your work. I'm going, I adore your work. You know, I just make it a bit louder did you, on the did guitars. You never fancy, did you never fancy doing an album and getting people like some Willie Weeks on? Or, oh, you know, you, the first those, band I guys. wanted to be in, to be honest, was the Grease Band. Um, I worked with the fantastic Alan Spenner, another God oh rest his soul. Oh, my God. Uh, One of my yeah. absolute heroes. His work with well, Ro I his said work to him, you know, if I work with Roxy it's music. the only time I ever applied for a gig and never heard anything back. Uh -huh. uh, and I was the only oh. one, by the way, the audition for Deep Purple. It was the first time that they'd all got together to audition someone, you know. But I think it was because I brought the, uh, the bells. A bells are four you go. My yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a little Scottish whiskey there to help the, the, the tonsils. It's quite funny, yeah, yeah, David, because yeah, yeah. you said with you said with with all these influences, the people you've met and worked with, it, it's yeah. almost like if you didn't get that Deep Purple gig, you could have been like a Robert oh, Palmer no. type character. <laughs> well, it's it's so funny. I knew I knew him as Alan. I knew him oh, from right, Scarborough. He was in a band called the Mandrakes, and, yeah. and that was like our favorite local band. Um, so, and I, I'm, I don't know where Robert came from, but prior to that, Tom and I just found some demos that uh, a, an associate had played to Chris Blackwell. This is way years before Deep Purple. Uh, and he went, oh, I like this. I'm looking for a blue-eyed soul, white soul singer, you know? He said, ask him if he's got anything more up-tempo, which he never did. I found out by accident and felt so affronted. I told him to give me my tapes back, and Chris signed Robert. 
uh, Alan, Robert. Wow. You know. So you were on the money there, Guy. You were yeah. on the money. Yeah. yeah. That's there you who go. he would But yeah, been. I was loved. I was I met Muddy Waters, Stevie at the Stormringer sessions. Oh my god, Sly and the, and his brother. I said, Sly, I'm a huge fan. And he goes, I'm Freddie, you motherfucker. <laughs> Because they had these enormous <laughs> privet-like, you know, sculpted <laughs> wigs. But Sly, mean Sly Stone, man, jeez. Oh. It's it just breathtaking. Uh, Bowie came to our sessions. Mickey Fleetwood, who I just adore. Um, uh, yeah, was it was that? amazing. 74, early 74. Bowie, yeah. Bowie came. Uh, Bowie, oh, I knew Dave. Yeah, I first met David in the, the height of his astonishing plume, uh, the Ziggy plume. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, and yeah. Glenn Hughes, uh, I'd just flown in from London. We were staying at the Wil Beverly Wilshire. I think now it's the region Beverly Wilshire. Um, and he kept calling me, and I'd taken a bunch of Valium. Or whatever. He said, Dave, he wants to meet you. I was going, fuck off. You know, one of those. I can swear, by the way, kind of, this is a, yeah, like yeah, a podcast. Can, of course. Oh, 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 um, just David Bleep Coverdale. Um, <laughs> but so he kept calling, and I was going, oh, my so I go down to a relatively modest suite, I have to say, two security guys. And I said, don't even fucking think about it. So, you know, like I'm just as tall as Magic Johnson. I have heels like this on, you know. Uh, so I go in. Alice Cooper, it's a small suite. Alice Cooper, uh, Ronnie Wood, and I'm hearing. Always Ronnie Wood. You know, the, the <laughs> sniffy sounds in the bathroom. Ronnie, of course, yeah. bless him. <laughs> so, and I, I could never understand that everybody's doing blow. But all, everyone's sneaking to the bathroom, you know. So the door opens and Vishnu walks out. You know, David with his astonishing plume, translucent skin, you know, the, the uh, thin white yeah, yeah, duke, yeah. God bless him, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with a red chiffon jumpsuit flared at the knee. And I, I'm just, I, he looked like a deity to me. Uh, and in those days, I'd wear those big, Navajo silver jewelry, oh, right. and he held his hand out, uh, and I did. He looked so frail. I didn't want to, you know, like a <laughs> butterfly. I didn't want to, and he squeezed my hand like the really butch bloke, and all my rings crackled against each other. And he went, "Fucking hell! I thought I broke your hand." <laughs> <laughs> those those were the days when he only ate white food and oh and it was white. red peppers and milk <laughs> david it? was david was adorable was right? we had a terrible ex scenario he came down to do a session we were at the re the record plant the original record plant on third street i think it was at the time uh in la uh and david came in i was a huge gitan goloise disc blur smoker came from my art school days right so and I couldn't get anything. I was drinking Long Marlboro, those tall, you know, uh, just questionable yeah. stuff. David walks in with like two fucking cartons of uh, Gitan cigarettes. And I went, oh, my God, David, can I buy a couple of packs off you? He went, oh, sorry, David, I've got a session tonight. It was like 400 cigarettes. So <laughs> I went, fuck it. I was so petty. I found out there was this place called Kramer's Pike and pipe and smoke shop on Little Santa Monica Boulevard. <laughs> so I get my driver to take me over there. In those <coughs> days, I had a long, uh, ridiculously long, uh, almost Macy's parade size um, Fleetwood limo, you know? Uh, they're tiny now compared to this. And I went in there, I bought every piece of Turkish tobacco, French tobacco. We filled this enormous trunk of the car the back seats with all of every carton of Jutan, Goulois and all this. And the next thing I'm getting calls from David, do you think I could buy a, a pack of a, a carton? I'm going, no, you fucking can't. No, no. <laughs> I suppose you guys, grew, you must have, you probably grew up on Truffaut or something and you, were, you wanted to be like those, you know, John Paul Belmondo or... Oh, me? Was, oh, my God, no. Are you kidding me? I was Yorkshireman, you know. Uh, I, I, I weep openly watching Billy Elliot because I know all of the characters. I can smell the streets, you know. Uh, I don't know what the musical's like, but it's an immense catharsis for me to watch uh, when that you, show. When, but uh, in I, those I, days, I, we I, never meant the cigarette singer. <laughs> I did oh, mean oh, the cigarette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Art student, uh, darling, yes, art student. Yeah. I studied to be a, yeah, you, so that was the whole thing, you know. Do you find yourself, you know, now um, ever 
yearning to go back and walk some of those streets of your childhood? Well, it's funny because uh, the, the director I'm working with now on all the video assets of Whitesnake, uh, a beautiful guy, we took him with us on uh, the first month of the farewell tour to document uh, the tour for a project, obviously farewell video, farewell CD and a coffee table book like we did with the Purple album. Um, you know, because it's so memorable. We just, we only have to go through 70,000 pictures, which is, as you can imagine, I can't wait. But it was a very photogenic band, very gifted band. You know, uh, Tanya, of course, is just Medusa, uh, yeah. a goddess come to earth. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's so, it was so emotional for me. I'm not sure I could do that again, certainly in, in the UK. You know, it was just so more intense than I've ever, ever felt before. Wow. I've always loved to, to play, but it was just, this is, oh my God, is this, is, is this it? This is the last time, you know? Just enormous emotional bond do, between do the crowd and me. Do you have family still? Do you have family still? The, no, in, in um, no, only child and uh, we lost both parents, which of course, as Oscar Wilde would say, is <laughs> yeah. irresponsible, but no, it was, yeah, yeah. wasn't my choice. Uh, let's talk about your unboxing. We mentioned it earlier because mm. those vi these videos, I mean, I watched your Christmas one at Christmas as well when you dressed as oh. Santa Claus. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, and you, I have no have shame, say, Gary, it, you know by it's, now. It's, <laughs> How Excalibur. white was my snake? It's, my new book. It's, <laughs> is Excalibur in the room? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, there it is. Yeah. It's a nice little stabber. A nice little stabber there. I swear to God, I don't know where that stuff comes from. They just start rolling the cameras and I'll just blather, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, the, it's so joyful for me. Uh, we have a whole new team I'm working with, which has given me a... a a beautiful adrenaline uh, rush to work with such young and creative and driven people, you know, who I'm learning from and hopefully teaching a thing or two. It's a beautiful mutual exchange. This is I'm what really I, I, love, I love about you. Yeah. Mm? I love about you because a lot of old rock stars, you know, they just, they just, they don't get, <laughs> a lot they of old don't rock stars. get. Are you grouping me well, in with covered. a, Fucking hell, James. We're in our Gary's point is, is <laughs> absolutely right, which is, which is so true, which is that thing of, of, of we're in this new world and new ways of communicating, yeah. getting stuff Oh, my God, out. are we ever. And you've embraced yeah. all of it. Well, so. it's, you know, I think my wife and I talk about this. Uh, as I say, she's on a meditative retreat in Barnsley. <laughs> <laughs> bless, bless Barnsley. <laughs> but the, uh, we talk about regularly how extraordinarily seismic Mushy shift. Mushy peas in her eyes. The, the, <laughs> yes. The little pork pie bra, yeah. bra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mini pork pies. No, the, uh, the uh, I love Barnsley. Are you kidding me? I had to lock my hotel once, one time there. For, there was an onslaught of lovelies. But, um, but no, hang on. So we talk babes. about the seismic shift, the, yes. the seismic yeah. shift that COVID has presented. You know, particularly uh, in our craft, which is music. I talk to a great uh, many musicians who can't afford to go on the road. Promoters can't afford to pay. You know, there's only these enormous productions uh, where the tickets are mm -hmm. just ridiculous in a time of economic crisis yeah, all over yeah, the place. Absolutely. You know, it's, uh, you know, I've always, always tried to keep prices reasonable, but the bigger production you take out, the, the more guarantee you get from the punk promoter, they have to pass that on. If you're not going to get sponsors, they have to pass that on to the, to the fans, which is always and been how challenging. And how was the tour? How was the, how, how oh, was the tour coming back after COVID? Breathtaking. It was so interesting. We started in Dublin, of course, 60 guest tickets for Tanya. <laughs> oh, I think she's on her way to being president of Ireland, with, and she has my eye. I'll, I'll finance it. Um, the... Uh, <laughs> And yeah, and just worked our way down from, went from Dublin, Glasgow, and it was just so incredibly emotional. We had no guests backstage, which was very challenging yeah. um, because of the, the COVID bubble, as it were. Yeah, uh, we know that and I, I understand my, my dear brother James, Jimmy, was upset that I didn't call or invite him to the London show. It just wasn't even on our radar, you know? We were told we, uh, we, we had to, everyone who came backstage had to test. And yet it was ridiculous because we were traveling, we were going into shops, we were going to yeah. restaurants, yeah. 
you know, going to museums. And yet, so in the end, I think we got quite relaxed about it. Uh, we were all okay. Well, you were so. well, you were very lucky because I, I just hear a yeah. lot that it's still, it's just not as reported as much. It's too, like over here, it's all political, which is just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. No, no, it was um, the same here. Yeah. How everything's made political. But you must have felt so godlike getting back up, getting the snakes oh. up, you know, get it, you know, playing with this double header with the scorpions. I mean, well, no, it was, uh, we took Foreigner and, and a super band Foreigner. friends, uh, Europe out of uh, Sweden, great band. Uh, it was a super ticket for, for the fans, but it was just extra double emotional for me. You know, it's always an emotional thing for me to actually, what I would say, come home and perform mm -hmm. at home. Um, so it was, and then, you know, the intention was, I was going to retire in 2020. That was actually the t world tour sold out before I'd even made the announcement. Well, this is going to be my farewell tour. And as we all know, it was like, boom, gone. Just COVID just closed everything down. We actually were in Singapore when the pr Japanese promoter said, you know, we, I we can't do that. the tour. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, you you, you so, put out a very emotional sort of little video on social media. I remember it. Well, it's, it's you know, just caring. That's one of the things yeah. like normally, I'm, you know, I mean, I don't live in Beverly Hills. Well, I have a Malibu beach house, but I don't do the L.A. Yeah. thing like I did years ago. We, you know, we live in a really quiet environment, really private and quiet. Cause, you know, I can always find noise, etc. But I'm, you know, I have this Mr. Saturday Night thing or uh, a monk in residence, you know. Um, but it's amazing having your own studio with video facilities and all, as, as, you know, to, to be able to create things. And now I'm going to be making a transition and, and migrate to Instagram. Um, I think, good, good, good. I think Twittering's uh, had its day for me. It's so, it's bizarre, some of the stuff. It's so, some of the stuff that I'm seeing, I'm going, wow, isn't there any kind of filter? It's just, you know, bizarre. <clears throat> Cindy and I were talking the other evening, you know, when she, Barnsley, um, that the, uh, she said, don't go in my groove, um, that the, uh, we have to look at at least one day a week to be absolute internet free. And I said, I think that's a super idea. What about Wednesday? She yeah, said, I can't, yeah, I yeah, teach yeah. it in my studio. You know, so we're gonna have to <laughs> negotiate a particular day, but I'm, I'm totally down, you know? Uh, I feel a kind of responsibility, a delightful connection with people who've supported my work. And I love giving people a laugh. I love, pe you know, uh, being able to say he's a brand spanking new video from, you know, uh, stuff they've never seen before. And the new mixes are fantastic. We have a super master in New York in Scott Hall at Master Disc. It's just really almost giddy bluebirds flying out of every orifice. You know, I I looked on Spotify uh, earlier, and it says that you're playing a special live gig with Guns N' Roses and Def Leppard in April. I guess that is, that's still up there, but that's been cancelled now, right? Um, well, I think Aunt Leopard's out with Motley doing that. That's what I that's what I thought. Maybe no, I don't no, really understand. No, no, absolutely but... not. Uh, not. Absolutely not. Spotify. Don't yeah. get me started. Yeah, but you will. <laughs> you will. You will be returning to a stage. I, I do hope so. It will really entirely depend on my health. As I say, I've got another two months before I can be x-rayed again. I'm trying to avoid surgery for a torn rotator cuff because uh, I've heard the recovery is just awful. And of course, the older you get, those kind of things are rather sh shocking to the system. Um, so I'm working with... I have one of those and I was told it was never going to get better. And it did. I'm working with a, an amazing guy who worked with me when I had the both knee replacements. Uh, 2017, he got me up and running. A hard ass uh, PT guy, absolutely hard ass. I can usually seduce and manipulate my way through life, but not with this bastard. <laughs> I swear. But I thought I had an was, operation on mine. Yeah, he uh, he just makes me do, and it's so interesting learning. I love every day to me is a school day. I love all learning this stuff instead of putting pressure on yourself, overdoing it. Like it's almost as if you're punishing your body you know, when you don't really have to. But I think my next x-rays, I think, will be very, very beneficial. But, beneficial. but uh, or it sounded like a place in Spain. The, um, <laughs> but the, and I think in uh, six months will be the actual, uh, if I need to have surgery or not. And if that's the case, God knows what the recovery is going to be. You know, I can't do a half-ass show guy. I've got to give no, it all, you know, all or nothing. 
well, it's David, just I can't sing still of the night with, you know, like in the still of the night. I can't believe that you won't be back, I must say. And um, Well, I don't know. I don't know. As yeah. Mr. Connery said, never say never. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as I say, there's, there's people I've never said that I'm retiring. That was a farewell tour that should have gone two years. You know, my guys had committed to me for two years. It was just ultra heartbreaking to, to you know, because I mean, it was it's really challenging. That was it's really when it's still bad. good. When it's when it's still good to be bad coming out. Oh, my God. April, I believe the end of April. Um, it's it's. It really is an awful lot of fun. We, as you say, we've got an unboxing on there. Uh, and, of course, it was the, the Silver Snake, the DC reveal, you yeah. know, uh, which oh, actually went brilliant. over pretty well. Went over uh, very considering well. I was, I was really, as you can imagine, nervous because I had my hair cut one time uh, and I, I, I couldn't wait for it to grow back. This I'm actually rather enjoying. You know, well, we're very jealous, and I'm embracing gray? embracing the grey. We're very yeah, but we're we're jealous of your mane. I'd I'd take any colour, but David, we're gonna I think we're gonna have to <laughs> move on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. It's always lovely to see you. Always lovely to you see know, you. You know, you're on you're on our intro every show. You're on our intro. Did you know that? No. David? What's that? What am I doing? Oh, well, yeah, but we have clips. We have clip. We 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 have a little <laughs> intro, and then we have we have with music with some clips of guests, and uh, your your. Famously quoted as, well, what is it, Guy? It's a, well, that's a big tune for sure. I originally wrote that for Tina Turner. <laughs> and that is part of our intro. Check it no, that out. Is the, if, that's why I say, if you ask anyone about rock on tours, nine times out of ten, they will say, that's a big tune for sure. That's you, you have one of the greatest speaking voices in the English yeah. uh, oh, world. Oh, bless your heart. Bless your heart. And singing. Thank and you. And singing, of course. Yeah. But no question. It's when are you when are you playing? You. Bless your heart. When are you playing with Nick again? Is there anything planned for you guys? Uh, yeah, the, we, we're just doing like ten days in. It's just the Czech Republic and Italy and Poland in summer, and then Australia in September. The month kick ass. Well, stay yeah. safe. Just stay safe. We're Thank playing you. Pompeii as well. We're playing Pompeii. Oh, flashback, flashback to the old, yeah. to the, uh, the old Floyd. Yeah. yeah. All right. Love you guys. Big love, love to you. everyone. Thank you so much for coming back, David. So Total you, you know, pleasure. You're, you're... Mwah. Okay. Mwah. God bless. He's gone. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, oh God. I mean I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Oh, imagine being his hairdresser. <laughs> you know, I mean, having to listen. He's so great. He's I just, so li great. you can listen to him. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know whether we should even be bothering talking, you know, just say hello and just leave it. It's but, true. You know. And there's also, a slight, I mean, for a second, there was thinking of, of, of we covered so much last time. It's like, what is there to talk about? There's always everything to talk about with Dave. He's, 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 he's wonderful. His spirit, his energy is so youthful. It's brilliant. He, he's just looking for new stuff all the time yeah, isn't no it? absolutely the way he embraces everything he is but he is the definitive rock on tour guest but there's no question of that he really is you know you talk about you know what david arnold said about yeah. you know putting it in a museum but even the way he says rock you know when you go to those things on definitions you know those sort of you know they could click on the little speaker and it tells you how to say a word it should be Coverdale saying rock. It's, that's, yeah. <laughs> but there, actually, there was one word he said early on, and I, I remember thinking, I've got to bookmark that and say because it was it was it was just the most fantastic pronunciation. And of course, I forgot. Well, you know what you could do? You could listen to this podcast. Yeah, and, uh, and you'll find it as hopefully you have done. What that worst link ever? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope I hope uh, David lived up to his own billing. I think he did. He certainly lived up to his own billing. And and do you know what? He's coming back. Well, of course, he, he's he's the icon of the show, isn't yeah. he? He's the is the mascot of the show. Well, I don't know. We're just his mascots, really. I don't know well, what, exactly. what are we? We're, we're, just we're his nothing. Servants, we're nothing. We? We're his we're toys. Nothing. We're nothing. He's, have, we'll have his fun <laughs> and with us and toss us aside like a rag doll. No, and it was like it was lovely the way he spoke about restless heart and everything. That was really warm the cockles of my heart. Yeah, so. lovely. Uh, thank you to Ben from Gimme Sugar for producing this show. And thank you to I you. I always say thank you. You always say. I know. I, I'm just as grateful to Ben as he is. It's just that he always gets in first. Um, but thank you all for listening and keep it right here, people. And it's good night from me. Good night from them. Rock on Tours is produced by Gimme Sugar Productions for Warner Music Group UK.